When Five Nights at Freddy's first released, fans complained about how stupid it was that a door should require power to stay shut. So respectively, the creator removes the doors in the sequel. In Five Nights 2, people complain about the flashlight power supply and that stupid music box. God, I hate that music box mechanic. Uh, so the creator respectively removes them in the sequel as well. But in Five Nights 3, the community complains about how hard it is to see spring trap in the cameras. So the creator rips out the camera systems and gives you doors that don't require power and a flashlight that doesn't run out of battery in 5 seconds. That's Five Nights 4. Now Five Nights 4 shouldn't even be called Five Nights at Freddy's. It's Five Nights in a spooky abandoned house in the middle of a forest. This final chapter to this game series feels more like a, a spiritual successor rather than the last true sequel. This time around we're putting a dark spooky house and the animatronics are in the house for some reason. They aren't just animatronics, but they look like nightmarish Tim Burtonized versions of the original characters. The way the game plays is you have to run from one side of the room to the other, peeking through the doors into the dark hallways. Now the animatronics can be residing in these hallways in the dark, and the only way to tell if one is there or not is by shining your flashlight down these hallways. Now, however, if the animatronic has made it to your door, and he's standing right outside the door and you shine the flashlight in their face, that's an instant jump scare death. But if you shine the light when they're at the end of the hallway, it'll scare them off and buy you a little time to check to the next door and to, or to take care of some of the things that, that happen in your room, like these weird Freddy things jumping on your bed. So how do you tell if an animatronic is in front of your door when you peek through? Listening. <laughs> For some reason, the animatronics make breathing sounds like the robots need to inhale oxygen to survive. And that is how you know if, if one is outside your door or not. However, and I'm certainly not the only person to complain about this, as Scott has posted on his website and on Steam, that he will release a patch to fix this issue. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll have to recreate it with my microphone because the wiki pages haven't posted any of the sound files for the fourth game yet because of how new it is. Uh, but the animatronic's breathing sound that you have to listen for sounds like this. <sighs> However, in the game, kind of sounds like this. You can hardly hear it. I mean, usually I play these games with my volume halved and one side of my headphones off because the jump scares are super loud and all the other games are mostly played visually. I mean, you, you have to look to see if one is in the vent or you have to look through the cameras, you know, it's kind of map where all of them out. And the audio cues in the previous titles are helpful and I was able to hear all those previous audio cues with my headphones at half volume, but in this game it is vital that you have sound and you can hardly hear it. Which means, sorry deaf people, but you're you're gonna have to go play Minecraft or something if you're hard of hearing. Trying to explain the gist of the gameplay in first person makes it sound like you're explaining a bad dream you had. Which actually might be a stroke of genius, but calling this game a work of genius is a spark of the truth. But if you're like, I had a dream where I was like this little kid, and I was in this like little kid's bedroom with this flashlight, and I heard these like really creepy noises and stuff, and I would shine the flashlight down the hallway, uh, next to the kid's bedroom and I would see something move off in the distance. Uh, and then uh, the, in the kid's closet I opened it up and there was like this, this freaking robot thing inside and then I closed it and I waited and I opened it up again and instead of the robot it was a plush doll of the, of, of the thing I saw. Which might have been exactly what Scott was going for which is why it could be a, a stroke of genius but I, I doubt that. I, I'm not hating on the game. And this game is genuinely scary, probably the scariest of all the previous games. But the game was announced to release on Halloween of this year, then it was announced to come out on August 8th, and then out of the blue the creator decided to release it yesterday without any warning. I feel like he went ahead and released it because he had the entire game finished in a weekend and was sitting on it for a long time and just wanted to get it out there. Now, without spoiling anything, the creator does answer one question that we've all had about the lore, and then creates 20 more questions on top of that, almost paving the way for another game to be made to explain that crap. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, hey there. Uh, welcome to my new Five Nights game. Uh, I really have nothing to talk about. Uh, I've run out of ideas for the story since there's been way too many sequels I've made. Yeah, I really cashed in on this. Uh, okay, well, have fun. Uh, thank God, however, we're not getting a fifth Five Nights game. Instead, we're getting a a, deal, a DLC uh, in October. Uh, thankfully though, this is a free DLC and this DLC will probably without a doubt answer some more questions. Uh, but I actually had a theory 
uh, for the moment. Uh oh, spoilers alert! All right, I'm gonna get into spoilers now, uh, cause there's no way to explain this uh, without getting into spoilers. Now, right now, because the game is so new, the wiki doesn't have anything on the story or the plot. But from what I've seen on the game, I'm gonna make a guess on who we're playing as and why everything is a nightmare. Now, the mini games after each night tell the story of a boy who is going to have a birthday party at Fred Bear's family diner. And he's kind of a depressed little thing. He's always crying and having his older brother scare him around the house wearing a foxy head. It is then later revealed at the birthday party that that child in the minigames is the victim of the bite of 87, uh, with the robotic Fredbear being the culprit of the incident. I believe the child in the minigames is also the person that you play as in the actual game, in the house. Uh, we know that the child survived the bite of 87 because of Bone Guy's message in the first game. The bite of 87. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe. I think everything is kind of dreamlike because the child is in a coma and is fighting to survive by battling his worst fears and his comatose nightmares. In fact, as I was writing this script, the wiki updated and now there's an article on the first night. And in the trivia section of this article, it says, Sometimes if you turn around to the bed, an IV drip can be seen at the side, hinting that the player's character may be ill. That right there just further solidifies my theory. But it's just a theory. Uh, and I thank you so much for, for taking the time to listen to my rant. I have nothing more to talk about, so I'm just going to end this freaking video right here. Bye.